actually I have one slide left, but this could take an hour. Um, just a little bit of feedback I was hoping to get. Um, this is the new faculty workshop project. Like I said, we're in our first semester of it. Um, and you know, we're collecting all this data that I mentioned, pre and post semester interviews, surveys, um, we're getting all these teaching artifacts. So, you know, and we have some ideas. Like what we're struggling with now is really what do we do once we have all that data. Um, so I was hoping to get a little bit of feedback. We have some clue, right? So the obvious stuff in here we kind of know. Um, but you know, what kind of analysis might be interesting, what data to collect. Um, so the big ones, you know, that we're looking at is how their practices change over time, how their conceptions of teaching change over time, um, what encourages or discourages them to you know, lean toward the research-based teaching, um, and sort of their conceptions of teaching stuff. Um, but I'm sort of open to feedback from you guys who have lots of different perspectives on things about, um, like I said, we're, we're in the process now of trying to figure out what to do with all of this, and also, you know, completely nail down what data we want to collect over these next three years. And is your central research question really, like, what are the factors or the experiences of people as they implement change? Yeah, our central research question goes back to that first thing I said, which is in a really big picture way, how can we help um, encourage more research-based teaching across the board, right? And we picked this, in this, this narrower project, we picked people who um, know about innovations because they went to the new faculty workshop. They got the support of their department who paid for them to go. Um, and on the surveys that we didn't just pick anyone from the new faculty workshop, um, there were people who said, hey, I'm really enthusiastic about trying some of these things. Um, and we're willing to participate in our study. Um, so we sort of say, well, this is like the best case. Like any problems that this group has are pretty big problems, right? Because they've got everything for the most part in place that you would expect for them to be successful um, at what they need to do. And, and we suspect that they're not going to be that successful. And this is our hypothesis, is that you know all their good intentions, that over time they're going to kind of drift back into traditional instruction um, and to identify the things that um, get them in that direction. Um, though maybe not, maybe not. Um, I mean, most of them right now, for example, are much more innovative thinking than their colleagues are except for one who's at a um, institution with some other PER folks and has been sort of it put into this highly um, innovative classroom. And so he's actually like, gosh, I just don't know about this. You know, it's kind of funny because it's like they're all kind of going the opposite direction. Um, but most of them are like, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. They're all excited about it. It's almost like I want to eyeball it, but I think 
He got it in his box. He got it probably in his email. He didn't start reading it. He was like, no. So let me tell you the story. But, um, okay. So, identity. Uh, so, like Steve. Man, I, I wish I had it recorded like he has recording because Steve, like, he would he would introduce himself as Oscar. Hi, I'm a, I'm a, uh, wait, what does he do? Hi, Amy. different is this instructor's instruction compared to your other instructors? 
Right. That way you get kind of a contextually normalized mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's, I, I think, an excellent idea. Other stuff that came up? We had identity. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we, wanted to know, we wanted to know who they talked to about teaching and how often. Yeah, so we do ask that yeah. in the interviews. That's one of the questions. You know, how often are you talking to your colleagues? And what do they say? And are your colleagues, do, they, do your colleagues know what you're doing? And, you know, do you feel like you can share it with them? Are they supportive? So like those that, they might be talking to other people too. Like maybe they talk to their grad students yeah. or spouse. Or like. That's great. So we were curious. That goes with our reinforcement. Like, how many opportunities do they have to reinforce this? I am someone who cares about teaching identity, you know, like, like, or is, are you in a place that actually makes it difficult to accommodate that way of seeing yourself? Oh, so, okay, so we have identity, and then what is their identity? So, like, and does that change over time? Yeah, so yeah. I'm a person who teaches, I'm a person who's committed to teaching, I, you know, see that as a core sense of who I am. You know, and, and maybe in teaching in a progressive way or teaching in this way or that way. And does that change over time? So sort of their conceptions of their self as a teacher? Yes. Yeah. And I think I think you should ask them actually you should you should prompt them in one of those surveys, like describe who you are, you know, and then you can see what they select out as a matter of, of putting forth their identity. Um, and so we're doing that with these K-12 teachers we're working with in Streamlined Mastery. And, and it's really interesting when you see how they introduce themselves because it helps you understand what, their, what, what identity they want to give you. So you just say describe who you are as a general sense or describe who you are as a teacher? Well, we have to work on that question. decide. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's something like, like, you know, I'm a woman and I'm from. Right. No, the parallel would be, though, I'm in a physics department. I see it, and this gets at all kinds of interesting things. I say that I'm a physics researcher, I'm a condensed matter researcher, or I'm a um, you know teacher, I'm an educator, or I'm a PER person. Each one of those has a different sense of how is it that I project myself and have my identity, and what do I perceive as acceptable within these broader structures. Within these broader structures. And so that you get to see how that changes. Part of this started, which is, if that doesn't change over time, because it, let's say your hypothesis is right, which I'm sure is quite um, accurate, which is there's a mismatch between people engaging in these reform-based instructional strategies and institutional structures. If that, does, if that identity doesn't change in time, that means the person's crazy, which many of us are, all right? You know, definition of crazy is to keep doing the same thing over and over with expectations that you're going to get a different result. Um, it's like my mom will change that I... <laughs> exactly, which is crazy. So, um, but the point is, is, so systems then will equilibrate. They will educate people and sh help them shift their identity and say, ah, I think people learn that the students are stupid, or they learn that the approaches are stupid, or they learn, you know, that's a mechanism by which they can justify how their best intentions as an educator did not come into fruition, because otherwise I'm a bad person, I'm incapable of doing that. So the question is, how is it then that I start to shift my identity so that I'm content with myself in the environment that I'm in? And that tells you a lot both about their own identity and, you know, about their own self, what their approach is, what their goals are, and how do they sit in relation to those structures that allow or prevent them from doing that. And then the other thing that I came up with, which is really important, is this idea of feedback. What opportunities for reinforcement, which goes straight back to what Rachel was saying, is who do you talk to about this? But what other mechanisms do you have that reinforce this identity as being a reform-based instructional uh, strategy person, a uh, risk? Um, yeah, because the, the hypothesis is, is kind of like if you don't have you. opportunities to reinforce that I am a person who cares about my teaching and makes change in it, identity, then it fizzles out. Like it fizzles out without reinforcement opportunities. That's what we think. So how do you find out there? I mean, because to me, if you just say, who are you, you're going to get stuff that's so all over the board. That's right. Not gonna be useful. So how well, do you, you, you would, we would work on that like independently, but like if you were someone like, like Imagine that you're in a group of black. How would you introduce yourself? How would you professionally introduce yourself to a group of, a group of people at the new faculty workshop? 